Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and the last time I made a, um, a goblin face. I'm not going to use it. I went ahead and took the clay off of my form, put it back in the bag, and I'm going to make something else. I found this guy today when I was taking the dogs for a walk. It's a cicada. Um, it's quite dead. In fact, he's kind of empty, so I'm pretty sure there's tiny little bugs inside of there that I probably don't want in my house, but I'm keeping them anyway because they're so cool. Uh, I don't know how these guys survive, actually, because they're so loud. It seems like every bird in the country would be finding them, but they do carry on, and they're just really cool. they got these little little um, round eyeballs stuck on the edges. I mean, they just, I think, would be a really fun mask. It's also going to be kind of fun figuring out how to make the wings. I'm going to show them here to you. So this is going to be a really long project. I'll be breaking it up into a whole bunch of pieces. Now, if you actually want to make a mask of your own, rather than waiting for me to get this one all done and show you how I do it, I want to mention that you really <laughs> should get the book. Um, I wrote this book that has all the information in it so that you can know exactly how to make your own mask. Uh, and it's a whole lot easier to get the book and read it rather than searching around all over my blog uh, for various blog posts. I mean, it's just so much easier and you'll end up knowing how to do it. I highly recommend it, even though I wrote it. I think that's fair. And also, I recently got an email from someone who wanted very much to know where the pattern is for that pig, and that's in my other book. This is Make Animal Sculptures with Paper Mache Clay, and the pig sculpture is in there. Um, this is it was written as a course on sculpting. So if you have any interest at all in sculpting animals, using any kind of media, this will work. This has actually been used by a lot of art students for their final projects. They write to me and tell me how much uh, this really helped them. It's also been used by a lot of parents who are helping their kids with their science projects. So you don't have to be an art student to enjoy it, but it really does give you everything you need if you want to do some sculpting of animals. And it's got that pig in it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of map out the basics of the mask today. This is a plaster cloth form that I made using a mold that I made uh, off of a skull, uh, a resin skull. If I was going to make a mask that I actually wanted to wear and I wanted to make sure that it would fit, I would buy an adult sized plastic mask form off of Amazon.com. And most mask forms actually look like this. Um, you, they're usually made either of clear plastic or, or white plastic. And then you would just go ahead and put your clay on top of it to make your form. So in this, in this case it was just making one of these guys. Um, it's a imitation Venetian mask like I did. I'm not going to do that because I'm too cheap to buy another one and I also don't intend to actually wear this mask. I'm just doing it for fun. So he's got kind of a narrow face so I'm just going to cut it off here. It'll be um, just from here to there. I suppose if I was going to wear it I would want to uh, wear maybe a black bandana or something or pull my my turtleneck up over my face so that at night you wouldn't actually see the lower part of the head. I don't know any other way to get that particular shape onto a human face because he just doesn't quite, quite fit. I'm going to be using WED clay again. This, this is what I used again for the goblin that I made. A lot of people asked me if this was an air dry clay. Can Will it Will it be a permanent thing? Will they be able to put it outside? <laughs> and I apologize for not having made it quite clear. This is a modeling clay. You don't uh, use it for permanent sculptures. You just use it for making the original shapes. And then uh, usually a person would make a mold of it and, um, and cast into the mold. It replaces really expensive oil-based clay is what it does and it's much less expensive and it goes on an awful lot faster. I'll just go ahead and cover up my entire guy or, or all the way down here and then I'll come back and let you know what I'm going to do next. You don't need to watch me just putting clay over the form. That's kind of boring. I've got enough clay on here now that I can kind of get started with an actual shape. I'm looking at my bug I really hope my cat doesn't find him because he probably wouldn't last very long. But the actual face of my bug 
starts way down here. The back is just round like this. I'll definitely clean that up. And then it comes to a point, so I'm going to be getting rid of some of this clay. He's got what appears to be a nose right here. Again, that's triangular too. And I'm just putting this as a placeholder so I'll know where it is. I don't think bugs really have noses, but that's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to remove this clay. with my left hand so I'm not following the line. This little exoskeleton is so fragile I'm kind of afraid to put it down anywhere because it could probably break when it hits the floor. I think I got that reasonably close. Now this will need to come out a lot more. And then, again, doing this left-handed, his eyeballs are out here. That is what is so cool about this bug. They're bigger than this, but that's where they're going to go. So the entire face is right here. Now there's also this is interesting, now that I put him down I can see easier that there's a really strong triangular shape this way and he's got a nice white stripe right here so this is going to be just really fun. It's going to look like uh, an alien but anyone who lives here in Minnesota will probably recognize it for exactly what it is. Now I know that was really really short <laughs> but I do have some work that I'm actually supposed to be doing right now um, that doesn't have anything to do with mask making. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to let this sit for a little while. I'll put it under plastic definitely to keep it from drying out because WED clay is harder to work with uh, if it starts getting too firm and and I'm just going to think about it for a little while kind of um, maybe even get out my magnifying glass if I can find it and to really see exactly how that little teeny bug looks. Well actually it's a really big bug but I want to I want to get it as close as I can to an actual real cicada. So I mean, need to do a little bit more uh, research. I just found this guy today when I was out on my walk <laughs> with the dogs and I just got really excited about it so I had to go ahead and get it started. Um, be sure to watch for the next video and like I said if you really want to make your own mask make sure that you find the mask book out on Amazon.com. Um, here it is. How to make masks because it'll give you all the information you need uh, to actually make one of your own. Uh, I'll see you later and be sure and come and visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.